Flosstube and Instagram friends. My name's Kim and this is Flosstube number 11. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm kgoldman63 on Instagram. So welcome or welcome back. I have a fair bit to share with you again today. I have a finish, uh, two new starts, progress on one of my whips, a couple of things that I have uh, either reframed or put in a frame and uh, maybe a little bit of immediate radar. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, you'll notice that I am not in front of my normal uh, side of my craft room with the shelves. Um, this is literally just right straight across from where I normally sit. And I have been finishing so many things lately in gold frames and I ended up being able to kind of rearrange this wall a little bit and hang them all up together. And so, you know, before we go, I will maybe try to take the iPad and swivel it around and because it kind of goes all the way up to the ceiling and see if I can't share a bit more that's um, all around me on this wall than what you can just see right now. Um, okay, so there's that. And then uh, I have not taken my trip to the attic as of yet. So look forward to that and being able to share that with you the next time that I film. Okay, so now I wanna say thank you to my sweet friend, Carol, Rosebud Stitcher. Hi, Carol, here on Instagram and Flosstube. Carol was so, so sweet to send me a card and just, uh, just to bless me with a few um, skeins of floss, you know, my favorite color, pink, uh, lovely stickers that were just all falling out of the envelope gloriously, and um, a few of these really sweet little thread drops. So. Carol, thank you so much. So sweet of you. Uh, then I also got a Valentine's Day card from my friend Debra. You've heard me mention her before. She's been my friend since ninth grade and she is a wonderful paper crafter. And so she sent me this beautiful card. She has made me a lot of cards and I love them all. This might be my favorite. <laughs> it's just, it's pink and there's a flamingo and actually inside, that's what she put. It's pink, enough said. So thank you so much, Deborah. Okay, um, okay. So now I'm going to share a couple of floss tubers with you. Um, there are so many, and I've been really able to enjoy a lot of floss tube in the last couple of weeks. And um, so these are just a few that I want to share today. So this is Merritt Crawford. Hi, Merritt. Uh, the Just Because Buzz here on Floss Tube, and um, Merritt is stitching from the latest Blackbird Designs book, um, Winds of Autumn. I think that's what that's called. So she's stitching uh, Mighty Oak, which is actually the one I want to start first. And I've been so tempted, Merritt, every time she shows it. Um, she did a uh, a very clever, um, an antique wooden spool that she, um, you know, uh, hung. Uh, was it the Minty and Mary, Mary and Minty, the Brenda Gervais um, freebie that she put out over Christmas time. And she hung that from the spool. So clever. Um, she's a quilter. She does some wool applique. Uh, she's lovely, and I, I really hope that you'll go over there and tell her I said hi. Um, then, let's see. Oh, so I heard about Catherine. Hi, Catherine. From Brenda and the serial starter, Laura. Uh, Laura had mentioned her on the very last Floss 2 video that they did and uh, ran over there to uh, watch her. Now she's got just one floss tube up, so you can get in right from the ground floor. Uh, she shares a bit about, you know, um, just her history of stitching and um, very interesting. She stitches standing up, which I thought was, again, quite unusual, um, but it's just, she'll explain all of that. And um, she stitches samplers, uh, Blackbird, Plum Street, a lot of different things. And again, she's lovely. Um, so please, I hope you'll all go over there and say hi to all of the ones that I share with you and uh, let them know that I said hi. So then we have Amanda, Alba Stitcher. Hi, Amanda. Now, Alba is the name of her cat, beautiful white cat that makes an appearance on many of her floss tube videos. She doesn't have a whole lot out. Um, so again, you can catch up if you're not already watching her, but uh, she's lovely and she lives in Scotland. So her and then of course, Rebecca here is uh, living in Cornwall and the two of them, you could just go to enjoy the accent. Um, but this is Rebecca Hedgerow Stitching who has been doing floss tubes for, gosh, at least maybe I'd say two years. I know I've been watching her since the beginning as well. She doesn't always have a lot of time to film uh, very regularly, but lately she's had quite a few out. Um, and she's been buying antique samplers with the uh, intention of reproducing them at some point. So uh, Rebecca, again, is lovely. 
Um, okay, so let's see. I've got my list here. Uh, I think we can go ahead and start with my first finish. Uh, I pulled this out shortly after the uh, last time we were together and I was trying to find something to stitch on until we started our sal, which I'll share next. And uh, this is my Isabella Johnstone and I was so close to a finish on Isabella and I'm so happy to say that I was able to do that. Now, okay, so Isabella is in just another thrift store frame, but this frame I've actually seen at Hobby Lobby and it's just the frame, there's no glass or anything like that. It's literally just this portion. Um, but can we say that for Isabella, hashtag it's all about the cow. <laughs> I love this cow. Um, so Isabella is stitched on 37 count cord tassel, corn tassel by Legacy Linens, I access commodities. Um, one strand of floss over two linen threads. I've really talked a lot about the different floss that I've used, whether, you know, two of the silks and um, one, I believe just the one over dyed for the grass and then I, the rest of it is um, DMC. But I did change the alphabet because it was going to be this color. Oh, like I said, she's just kind of set in there for now. I don't know that this will be the permanent frame for Isabella, but it fits and I'm actually really happy with it. So she'll go up on the wall here and she's just loosely in there. She's not pinned or anything um, because like I said, I don't know that she'll stay in this. Let me see if I can get closely, uh, get closer here for you. That flower, the edge of this flower right here is the DMC color. And so I darkened it up for the alphabet because I really wanted to be able to see the letters a little bit better um, and the numbers. So that's either, I think it's DMC 612. It might be 613. And I did put the year, the 2021 is supposed to say one, two, three, four, but I thought that was a perfect place to change that to the year. And um, I think I only had one oopsie on Isabella. I believe it was the border on this side, one of the sections of leaves. I, I did two of the leaves the same instead of, I got lost the chart, on the chart, and, but I just, it looks fine. I didn't pull it out or anything. So, that's my Isabella Johnstone. Now, this is a needlework press design. You can get it as a standalone chart, um, but I got it from the, hold on, let me set her down. <sighs> Try not to, okay. I got her from this CD, the uh, Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly magazines, and they're all on this. I think it was the summer of 2010 that um, you can find that chart, or like I said, a standalone chart. So let me see if I have remembered to tell you everything about Isabella. I think I did. Uh, sorry, it looks like my, I got the rest of my notes in a different spot. Okay, so Isabella, yes, 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 yes. We're all good. And you know, I didn't mind stitching the border on that one. Like, I know you hear me complain a lot about border stitching. It's not my most favorite. Um, but I just, and I don't stitch the border all at one time first. I really like stitching it as I go, mostly because I like taking it in small chunks and also because, um, it really helps me just kind of keep making sure that I'm on, in the right spot and that's not always successful, but <laughs> that's the reason why, partly why I like to do it as I go. Okay. So that's Isabella. Let me see who's next. Okay. So then I started our... Sal, so it's hashtag Friendship Blossom Sal, and Annie B's folk art, hi Annie, mentioned this on her channel that she wanted to stitch this, and would anyone else like to? And I said, yes, yes, yes. And I already had the chart, I'd gotten it for Christmas, so I was super excited to be able to pull that out and get a start on it. So we started this on the Valentine's Day, February 14. Oops, I got some floss, goes with something else. And let me show you my progress on let me see if I can get it nice and close and kind of scan a bit for you. Um, I love the colors on this so much. That's my favorite thing about this is the colors and of course just the, all the, the design in general. It's, it's just so, so beautiful. Uh, this is on, let's see, 37 Count Wild Honey Legacy, which is again by Access Commodities. And I'm stitching this with a combination of the called for fancy floss and a couple of DMCs just because I didn't have, I think the fence is the DMC, you know, the windows and everything else so far. And I believe I had, oh, that's right. I didn't have the color for the house and I had to substitute that out 
I'll do better about telling you, I forgot to kind of double check that and, and let you know uh, what colors I had to use for that instead because I just don't remember right now, but I just didn't have it. So I used one that I already had. And the other thing I did was these um, stitches in the center of the flower, they're the long straight ones. That's called to be in, you know, the fancy floss, darker color there. But the DMC version conversion was very close. And um, so I just decided to save some of the fancy floss and use the DMC put for that portion. Um, everybody on Instagram really commented on her and that dress. Yes, she's adorable. Uh, the bee scab with some of the, again, the straight stitches. I think I just used the fancy floss for those straight stitches. Pretty sure. Um, let's see. What else can I tell you about? When, oh, I, you know what? I did make a, I made a mistake. Okay, so I made a mistake on an oopsie on this flower here. Uh, I went a little too far on the edge over here, but I didn't pull it out. And somebody mentioned, aren't all the flowers different anyway? So yeah, I imagine they are a little bit different here and there. I just, I thought it looked fine. And if I can avoid backwards stitching, I do. <laughs> so I am loving that uh, so much. And uh, I'll pull that out again soon. And hopefully next time I pull it out, I'll be able to have a finish. So then I was looking for something to, um, I wanted, I had a Zoom call, another lovely Zoom call with a friend, and I needed something that I could stitch on the Zoom call. Plus I was trying to find something to keep me occupied until the next one came out that I will share with you after this. But this is uh, one of my favorite samplers ever. Just love it. The Scarlet House Smith Sampler. I think it's just beautiful. And I was seeing a lot of people post their progress on uh, Instagram and just, you know, totally getting inspired to pull mine back out again. And uh, so I did. And I made some pretty good progress. And, you know, I gripe about the border. I know <laughs> it's not my most favorite border to stitch. It's a lot of work for me. But I just you know, you have to do it little by little. I'm just eating my vegetables as I go along. So I added, you know, this portion of the border got added. Um, I think I'd had a couple, maybe a couple of these and I finished up some of the doodads in the tree. I added this whole portion here, finished up coming across, um, on those two sections and there's still, you know, I didn't put the thing in here the the other motif here, and I know there's more across here, but, um, this is stitched on 47 count, sorry, 46 count, uh, Confederate gray by Weeks Dye Works, but it's the new Zweigart base. And so it's, I'm stitching with all the called for silks. So one strand of silk over two linen threads. <sighs> Just really, really, really loving that. I don't think there's anything else to say about Smith Sampler. I think I was, yeah, I think that's everything. Except that I just love it. And I'm really looking forward to having that finished this year. I'm happy to see that I am making some really good progress and staying motivated because, like I said, of all the, the wonderful uh, posts that I, I enjoy on Instagram following the hashtags. And um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to having that finish this year. So then this was the one that I feel like I kind of hounded Christina um, because she showed a sneak peek. And from the sneak peek, I was just like, oh, my gosh, you know, oh, my gosh, <laughs> it's it's just glorious. So she released this on the Sunday and I immediately downloaded it and pulled flosses for it. But because I was really feeling motivated on Smith, I ended up not starting it right away like I really had intended to. Um, now this is just a black and white uh, copy because I don't have a color printer. And uh, please go to uh, her site. So whilst Iris Snaps Designs and you can see it um, in full color there. And um, this is Thurza Hudson 1825 by uh, Christina at Wild Cyrus Naps. Hi, Christina. And I just finally got to get a start on this yesterday afternoon. Um, I am stitching this on the small piece of um, Weeks Dye Works beige, 40 count. It's the old base. The, this is the piece I had left over from uh, Happy Piper, which I will share with you again in a minute. But um, that's why I stitched, started in the middle. And I stitched straight up to the edges and the top because I wanted to make sure I had enough fabric and I didn't mess up like I did last time. And uh, gosh, I'm just loving this already. I, um, let's see. This, so this is one strand of floss over two linen threads. I think the only thing that I want to make sure I'm, I'm careful of. So 
I'm carrying threads farther than I normally do. I usually don't carry more than two strands, two, two squares, um, what I'm, what I'm stitching, but that's going to be a lot of starting and stopping on each one of those buds. And I decided to try to carry my thread. I'm stitching all of the green border, you know, the leaves and the, you know, vine portion, I guess, before I'm stitching the darker color and the pink. And then I'm trying to just carry the thread. Let's see if I can show you. I'm trying to carry the threads after I've stitched the green so that while I'm still going over, you know, like, I don't know, what is that? Two, four, maybe six or whatever uh, threads. They're, they're behind a couple of the other stitches. So it's hopefully not going to show. And when I, when I frame, uh, when I frame Thurza, I will use the warm and natural behind and, you know, like maybe a piece of warmer linen so that hopefully that will disguise if I have any of the carry threads. But I think it'll just be more enjoyable for me to carry threads than it would be to start and stop <clears throat> each one of the flower buds. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, I did have to switch. So the darker portion of the berry, I had to switch. It called for Merlot and I didn't have any. So I switched it to Brick, which is also Weeks Dye Works. I think everything else so far is a call for, but I did have to switch out one other color I didn't have. I haven't stitched that, that one yet, but um, when I get there, I'll share that. So I did want to share, so Christina had posted on Instagram and something, a comment about how her son asked her whether, uh, he, I think it was along the lines of, mom, do you think other floss tubers film in their pajama pants? And I, of course, promptly responded, responded to her, well, you know, I know I do, but I wanted to add so that, Christina, you can share with Isaac, should you so choose, that for me, you know... I'm retired and I like to stay home most of the time anyway, but for me, pants with buttons are reserved for very special occasions like going to church or taking a drive to the ocean with my husband to maybe get a taco and some gelato. And you know, the rest of the time, it's pretty much lounge pants or pajama bottoms or sweatpants. And you know, my husband got me a couple of packages of very colorful socks uh, for Christmas and all different kinds of colors. They're the same type of style, but all different kinds of colors. And I tell you, sometimes my socks don't even match <laughs> because I don't go to all the trouble to pair them all together. So anyway, just, just, just sharing. Um, let's see. So a couple of things on my radar, moving right along. This one is what I will probably pull out next. I've already decided on fabric and it's just DMC and I managed to snag the couple that I didn't have for those. Uh, so a two rabbit sampler by Lottie Da. And I've seen a few people sharing this recently. Um, Liz from Country Stitchers, Liz and Deb, um, I think she she just showed this on her last floss tube saying that she'd really wanted to get a start on this. And I was like, me too, Liz, me too. And then this one I've had for a bit um, after I saw, um, hold on, Cherry at Colorado Cross Stitcher. She shared this, that she'd gotten it and I ordered this from the attic shortly after that. And I think that when I finish Thurza, that will be my next smallish sampler. Uh, but you know, plans. I, I've been meaning to start Viola. Is it Viola Martini? Something like that. I've been meaning to start that one since the last time we were together and that hasn't happened yet. So oh, who knows? Um, okay, so let's see. I think that's all the stitching. Did I share? Oh, oh no, I didn't. Okay, hold on. So I've got my finish of my first trying with my Christmas chop saw, compound miter saw, my first framing uh, excursion here. And this was just a curbside uh, they had had like a garage sale and didn't sell it. And it, literally it's all dinged up. It's super lightweight and it was quite huge. So I thought, well, that's a really good practice piece so that if I make mistakes, um, cause it's kind of, it can be a little complicated figuring out which way to angle your 45 degree, you know, saw to make the, the, the cuts in the right place and, uh, making them exactly the right length so that they all go together and nice and straight is going to be uh, something I'm going to have to practice and kind of figure out how I want to do that. Um, so this is still just, uh, this is Happy Piper by Christina at Wild Cyrus Snaps. And um, it's still just kind of loosely set in there and I have to really kind of, you know, make sure it's straight and, and pinned. And um, But this was a nice practice. It's, it's so lightweight that I just hot glued this together. Um, I, normally I will plan on using wood glue and maybe get some clamps so that I can, I can do that, um, in the future, but 
I thought she looked pretty good in here. It just has a very nice antique feel to it for me. Like I said, with it being a little beaten up and um, I love it. So she's going to go on the wall here somewhere soon. And I think now, let me check my notes really quick. Okay. So if you want to hold on, <laughs> if you're interested, I'm going to try to uh, swivel my iPad around a little bit so that you can get a little bit more of a view of everything that's on my wall. So uh, hold on. Let's see. So we've got, that's my new frame for my Blackbird Designs, My Dear Hearts. Um, I had it in a white frame before and I put it in the gold frame. That was the other framing thing I wanted to share with you. And then we'll go all the way to the ceiling. Let's see if I swivel you this way. Oh. And over to the side and back down. And I'm gonna set you back down carefully. Great, good. And then uh, Walter uh, and Thomas, hands across the sea is right behind me. So if you see anything, I think the only thing I haven't shared with you before on my prior videos would be this one right here, which comes from this um, edition of the magazine. Again, this is on the CD. All of these magazines are on the CD. So I, this is really the only hard um, paper copy of the magazine that I own. And uh, I saw this being stitched and uh, she's actually... Um, finished it and framed it. It's beautiful. Um, Heidi Cran from Stitching Went Over Two. Hi, Heidi. And that's where I first saw it and, and hunted it down. And uh, my friend Becky, Socks for Mum. Hi, Becky. She, we actually started it together. Now I have shortened it. Um, I, you know, I, I just kind of moved things around and, and uh, anyway, I love it. And uh, I, the last thing I wanted to share was I do want to show you that I'm using my book. This is the first time I've had one of these and I am using my stickers and filling everything in but is anyone else there I'm sure it's just me I'm a little a little odd but I'm kind of a little bit anxious about where I put my stickers I, I want them to look nice <laughs> so and I'm not going to fill in the rest of the pages I, I think that I like to fill in all the writing first and then when I'm done with the month I'll go back and and put in some stickers uh the rest of the way so that I still have play, plenty of places to to write you know the things I'm working on so, okay, I think that is everything that I have to share with you about stitching. As always, I'm going to share some scripture and I hope you'll stay. But if you're just here for the stitching, um, I guess I will see you probably in a couple of weeks and I'll be able to tell you about my trip to the attic and uh, hopefully have some fun things to share with you about that. So take care. Okay, so for those of you who are staying with me, um, today I wanted to talk about forgiveness. So last time uh, I shared about agape love and I had a very sweet Instagram friend private message me and share a little bit about her personal testimony with me and the fact that whenever she does a study about agape love, the word that best describes it is sacrificial. Agape love is a sacrificial love. So I shared uh, John 3.16 as the scripture reference for God's agape love for us. And today I would like to add Ephes Ephesians 1.7 which says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So with Jesus's sacrificial death on the cross and the shedding of his blood, we have the forgiveness of sins. When we repent and put our faith in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we are given the free gift of salvation and the forgiveness of our sins, past, present, and future sins. Um, I think Psalm 103.12 is, is a beautiful psalm that says, As far as the east from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So by God's grace, we have been given the gift of salvation and the forgiveness of our sins. And now let's just take a look at what the Bible has to say about us forgiving others. So Ephesians 4.32 commands, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. And Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. I think it's important for us to remember that forgiveness is an act of the will. It is a deliberate act of love, mercy, and grace. We don't forgive someone because they deserve to be forgiven. 
we forgive because we have been forgiven. I really hope that you have been inspired to do a far more personal, um, in-depth Bible study on all that he has to tell us about forgiveness. I know that for me, I was blessed, I was encouraged, and maybe even a little convicted when I did my own personal study in order to be able to share with you today. Um, as always, thank you so much for staring, staying to share the scriptures with me. And uh, I hope to see you all again very soon. Take care.